Hey, this is Chris. And this is Isaac. And this is Daniel. And this is Ben. And today we're going to demo a piece of deployment software called Spinnaker. All right, Chris, take Perfect. it away. All right, so here we have our uh, fantastic website. As you can see, we've got a production environment as well as a staging environment here. Um, what we want to do quickly is uh, make a change to this so that we can then roll that out to production. Um, let's go and edit this and say something here. And we'll just commit that. And if only we could roll that out quickly in a seamless manner. <laughs> if only. So on top of that, then we've got our pretty standard Jenkins build here that's pulling our GitHub repo uh, to pull in the latest changes. Let's just give that a little uh, push since we don't want to wait for it. Um, you know, this is the uh, pretty standard Spinnaker flow. Do you want to get, tell us about that, Isaac? Yeah, sure. So first, code gets pushed to GitHub, just like you guys saw. We made a change directly in GitHub. Uh, then those pull uh, the the job is being pulled by Jenkins at that time. We force the the actual job to run, but now what's happening? It's being the job is being run, and what's happening in the background is we're creating a container and pushing that to a Google Cloud repo that we have for ourselves. Um, at that time, that's when Spinnaker is going to start taking over and see that Jenkins started and completed a job and that there's a new artifact available for it inside of the uh, Google Cloud repository. Uh, and then we're going to kick off a, a pipeline. That pipeline then um, looks and deploys that container that we deployed earlier through Jenkins, but now it'll actually deploy it to a staging infrastru infrastructure. Uh, once it's there, we'll run an integration test um, and make sure that everything that we deployed earlier or that we deployed to the repo earlier works as expected. Um, and once that's what that's there, we will manually accept the job to go to production or manually accept the artifact to go to production. Once that gets to um, production will actually be done. But when it goes to production, it does something that's really uh, interesting, which is a has a deployment strategy so it doesn't just deploy everything to production all at once it goes through a red black deployment in a way in a, in a strategy that allows you to deploy to production safely um, and doesn't take your entire infrastructure down and then quickly allows you to roll back just in case there are any problems so we're going to walk through that today um, and we're going to show you that next and you may be you may be more familiar with blue green versus red black but same difference Perfect. So here's the build that we triggered uh, a little bit earlier. Uh, if we dig into our pipeline here, here are the phases that Isaac mentioned deploying to staging. If we go quickly back then to our environments, we have production here. Um, and you'll notice that the extra question is here on the end that isn't yet in production. So on staging now, that's what we're doing. Um, and uh, as Isaac mentioned, we deploy the new cluster, disable the old cluster, and then actually shrink that one since we, in this particular case, we're using the Highlander strategy, which is to destroy the old cluster after we use it. Once that deploys, which should happen shortly. Yeah, so let me, there's actually, when you configure the pipeline, there are, here are the different strategies that you can use to deploy. So we chose the Highlander one for staging because we don't necessarily need it to be very smart in the way it deploys. Staging environment can be destroyed and brought back up very quickly without really affecting anybody on production. So we chose the Highlander strategy, which just destroys the previous server group. You can also choose a non-strategy, non I suppose, which is create the next server group with no Im impact on the existing server groups. And that means that you'll have two server groups in production without destroying the older one. And then you can do the red-black one, which is also called blue-green, but Netflix has uh, popularized the, the red-black uh, in the Spinnaker application. Uh, and this just disables the previous group instead of destroying the previous group. And this allows for easy rollback. Again, if anything were to break or, um, or crash in production. Again, we've specified the container that you guys saw us build earlier, and that's what's actually being deployed to stage and going through the integration test that we'll go back, and hopefully um, that'll be closer to completion. Do you want to take it from here, Chris? 
Perfect. So we've deployed it to staging um, and then Spinnaker has also run our integration tests. This is a simple script that you can set up to do anything you want during the process. Once it's successfully run integration tests and staging, the next thing to do before we go to production would actually be a manual judgment. So you can have your QA teams look over to make sure everything looks good. Once you're happy with that, approving that will then move us across to the next step, which is actually to deploy it into production. We should be able to see that we still don't have the, uh, the version there, but we have, you know, we haven't yet deployed to production. Then we move it on. Right, and so now it's going through the, um, instead of doing the Highlander strategy, it's going through the uh, red-black strategy. So if we click on this, um, the server deployment here, we'll see that v v V3 is, is rolling out as we speak right now. Uh, the desired uh, number of containers in production is two. Currently it's zero. So um, right now it's rolling those containers out to the uh, production, making sure that their health checks are okay. So you see that the, the UI automatically updated without us having to do anything. And so now that the, the current state in production is two. And so if we were to go to clusters, let's, and we need to remove this here. We'll see here's the old version that was there and that's currently being uh, reduced by Spinnaker. So what Spinnaker is doing is rolled out V3 and made sure that the health checks are okay. And now if we go back and we go to the deployment, we'll see that it's disabling the old cluster and that means that it's bringing down the other containers and out of rotation of the load balancer. And it does this in a very safe way so that your consumers or your customers don't see any real um, uh, uh, kind of outage on the website and you've done it, you've made those changes safely and you know that the application that's in production now uh, is working well. Absolutely. And all of these pipelines are configured through the UI here. So there are lots we could do in terms of if we wanted to change the way that these work. If we wanted to make it so that, for example, these different pipelines, these different stages were in parallel, we can do that through the UI here. Um, and all of this is nice and easily configurable. Right, and, and it's very configurable enough so that you can do things like canarying, um, again, the red-black, you can have just no strategy at all. It's, it's uh, very configurable to any type of pipeline that you have existing today and it adapts to um, a huge amount of different types of deployments. I mean, it works for Netflix, so it'll most likely work for the deployment that you strategy you have now. And while this is running, guys, one question that I would ask you to just mention on this demo is, you know, so this is Spinnaker, which is a piece of software that somebody could implement themselves, but the thing that we're doing here is we're offering to host this. And is there anything that you would say about that, about us hosting it for them? Yeah, I mean, right now, uh, there's a lot of subcomponents to Spinnaker, including databases, caches, um, seven to nine different microservices. Um, and what we've done in the last um, you know, few months is really get a deep understanding of Spinnaker, how it works, how the pieces connect to each other. Um, and you, know, you could be managing that stuff yourself, um, but if you'd rather be building applications that directly affect your customers and providing value for your customers and, and, and want to have us manage this, uh, we're here to manage it for you. And, and that way you can focus on providing value to your customer and, and let us deal with all the, the subcomponents. So. And Ben, for somebody who's thinking about CI, CD kind of at a higher level uh, from maybe a product management perspective, what are the benefits uh, maybe for somebody who's not as familiar with it as most people might be? Sure, sure. I think most people have probably heard of Agile development and some people have heard of uh, the Lean Startup. Um, CI, CD goes hand in hand with both of those frameworks or both of those, uh, those strategies. Um, it's all about getting a code product into your customer's hands as fast as humanly possible. Agile is a way to build software. Uh, Lean is a, um, a methodology or kind of a strategy for testing ideas and validating new ideas. And con uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment helps actually push that code to customers so you can get feedback more rapidly. So it's all hand in hand, and uh, the combination of those three, I think, is the recipe for success. All right, so we just saw that the build pipeline to production completed. Thanks for that uh, rundown there, Ben. 
So let's go back to the website, the production website, and what we should see if I refresh this is that it was deployed to production um, and it went through the entire steps um, and we feel confident that the deployment that went out uh, is indeed what, what uh, will be good for customers. Uh, it'll be stable. Uh, it went through the, the red-black deployments. It went through a manual check um, if that's something that you, you're looking to have. Um, but that's the end of the demo. Anything else? I, I would just say if, if, if any of what we just said is interesting to you, uh, even if it's just Chris's amazing Australian accent, uh, we would love to talk to you. So please reach out to us and, uh, and we'll chat. Thanks.